6,910 pounds, the Wildwood 26 D-Bud here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. I think this is a standout floor plan in a market segment that has an immense amount of similar floor plans in competition. It brings with it a bathroom entry door, half-ton towability, a super slide, excellent both pantry and personal bedroom storage, as well as a really smart equipment package. They did a pretty good job of making this one travel accessible, although you may not realize it right away. Like, you look here, you've got this extra large U-dinette, and you see it comes pretty darn close to the kitchen counter here, so you're going, yeah, I mean, you know, how am I supposed to get through there? We'll get to that in just a second, but while we're up front, something they did very well here, and it's just, this floor plan tip to tail is extremely well executed. They made it so that you can still get up to the front bedroom with this slide closed. And that right there is something most brands who have a very uh, forward mounted slide out seem to overlook. Then to access the rest of the RV, you actually just pop in the back door. So this is like your pack em up traveling door. It can also get you obviously to the bathroom and the bunk area, which is right around the corner over here. But you notice, you can fully open and close the bathroom door unimpeded. We can get in here, we can get to our kitchen drawers, our refrigerator, our pantry. This RV is, frankly, fully 100% travel accessible. You just kind of got to go in one door and out the other. One of the first things that really strikes me on this floor plan, though, is how it's not really any larger than, you know, other half-ton super slide bunkhouses with a bath entry door, but it feels... It just cavernous by comparison. It feels huge inside. Part of that is the taller six foot nine interior versus a more common and fine six and a half foot tall. But that extra three inches means we're getting uh, taller cabinetry. We're getting a uh, taller shower, which is something I like. We're getting more space per bunk. Uh, we have the ability to install a taller slide out. Everything gets a little bit bigger. So. It's a cascade effect that really does make a heck of a difference. As long as we're looking up top past these LED lights, I want to mention how you can outfit these with the optional 15,000 BTU air conditioner to give you some more cooling power, which is something I've never, ever heard anyone complain about. I've never had a customer say, boy, I just, you know, hate my camper because its air conditioner works too well. <laughs> we'll come back to the kitchen in a minute, but while we are here... Uh, one of the differences between Little Brother X-Lite and Full Wildwood is that you do get upgraded kitchen hardware. You see the nicer sink uh, fixture as well, or faucet fixture rather, as well as the solid surface countertops in the kitchen area right there. So, got central air, central heat to keep us comfortable spring, summer, fall, which is what this is. This is not some kind of crazy Arctic camper, nor do they try to pretend they are such. This is a very real world brand when it comes to that. Um, you know, I keep saying we're going to come back to the kitchen, but we keep talking about it because of where I'm standing. How about this? How about a 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt compressor refrigerator? So this is not a 110 electric only uh, fridge. This is 12 volt powered, meaning it is exceptionally traveling friendly. Uh, you know, as long as your vehicle has a 12 volt charge line running through your seven way plug on the back. And if you don't know what all that means, please give us a call here at Halid RV and we can help you out there. But the fact is, this thing is, uh, you know, very good for moving down the road, and it seems to keep up pretty darn well. This is one of those things that historically, I wasn't super jazzed on these things, but they have improved over the years, and I've kind of come around on it. And I think that's that's worth noting, guys. I think it's important to note not just when you maybe personally, preferentially dislike something, but keeping your eyes and your mind open to looking back at it later on. It's kind of like onions and peppers. Growing up, I hated onions and peppers, but as I grew older, I kept trying them, and wouldn't you know it, now I love those things. Nothing like a good old plate of nachos, am I right? Well, I got my normal order of operations messed up. I'm calling an audible. We're doing it live. We're going to hit the kitchen next, and check this out. That extra tall interior is giving us a taller pantry as well. This is a six foot nine pantry, and that is some serious storage, and I love how wide the door is so you don't have to go armpit deep to get to it. You know another really easily missed feature is the fact that these shelves don't come all the way up to the door, so if you want to put a little uh, mount on the wall to be able to hook like a broom or something in here, you've got a little bit of space to do that. Now this is only pantry number one. This RV has two of these big pantries, but on the way over to it, we're going to pass these extra large overhead cabinets and
Notice they didn't waste an opportunity for storage. They put a shelf in that overhead cabinet area to really maximize your storage space. And the handoff between the kitchen, living room, and bedroom area, what they've done with this entertainment privacy storage wall right here, this is absolute masterclass execution. And for me, it's this one feature right here that makes this whole RV absolutely sing and stand out from the crowd. It gives us a second big pantry, or frankly, you could use it as a shoe garage. Even though you do have a dedicated shoe garage below the fireplace, you could have a private shoe garage within that uh, sort of pantry door space there. But right by the door, we have all kinds of room for all kinds of things. Now we're staring at this, so we might as well talk about the entertainment. We are all set up for a big old flat screen, should you choose to add one. And I love the recessed uh, little shelf back here, so if you want to make a little device charging station, you can. That uh, big Bluetooth uh, soundbar also has USB and uh, HDMI mounted plugs. So if you want to put a little Chromecast or Amazon stick or something on there, you can. And electric space heating fireplace below. It gives us some bonus heat without burning up our propane. And you can use it uh, in no heat mode with just LED visuals as well. Now as we come back over here to the kitchen, I knew I'd forget something. I forgot to open this door right here. Massive space for an equally massive wastebasket. And that drawer or door seems to want to just do me the favor of closing itself. Which is convenient because I had to open these drawers anyway. We've got uh, triple full extension plywood box drawers, not particle board with a sticker wrap, which is nice. Now the solid surface counter here, you do have a, a single roll away aluminum drying rack, which is an extremely handy daily use feature. Note the easy reach appliance outlets on either side of that kitchen breeze window, begging you for things like coffee makers and appliances. And they do use a tempered glass uh, recessed stove right here so that you can maximize your prep space even further. From there, we move over to our bathroom area, and it is one of the things that I really like. As a taller person, the full Wildwood gives us that extra tall shower so that even a big old weirdo goofball like me can stand in here without my head necessarily in the uh, skylight above. Although, if you're taller than me, you still could do that. Got our power fan above. Notice we have a power fan and a skylight and a nice big 30 inch by 36 inch shower. Now there's a little bit of sawdust particulate on top of that toilet. This RV is literally still hooked up to the RV delivery driver's truck as I'm recording this, so pardon me. Oop, man, I keep forgetting stuff. Now that doesn't go all the way down there because there's some plumbing kind of things and they don't want cargo to shift and smash it. Good size sink that adults can actually get their hands into and I like the fact that we've actually got a uh, um, you know vanity mirror here, but notice not only is it just got a magnet holdback, there's also a little uh, nylon cord sort of holdback so that it's got in a sense like a little safety travel lock. Now as we back up here, they did something that I really love that I haven't really seen done a lot before in conventionally constructed campers, often referred to as stick and tin campers, and that is this flip up cargo bunk. And not only did they do it. Not only do they give you extra space for all sorts of things, like theoretically you could even back one or two of the kids' bikes in there and maneuver the handlebars in the correct way to uh, you know, be able to put the bikes in there, but they also included a gas strut so that you don't have to try to like crawl in there and, and latch that thing and it'll hold itself in transit. And note how they also gave you this huge storage pocket below that bunk. They just gave you maximum potential, uh, you know, dry cargo space, basically. Now, the thing I like is how well they treated the bunks here. Uh, for instance, you've got this open air ladder wall. The ladder is actually supporting the top bunk, so it's it, it's easier to get little kids up and down. You don't have to throw them into the bunks, as it were. You don't have to blow out your rotator cuff to do it. But also the fact that, note, both the upper and lower bunks are getting their own USB plugs, which is a very handy little thing. And then we have what is quickly becoming one of my favorite uh, features of the Wildwood series. Stow and go storage, baby. We've got very simple but very effective slide out storage totes below all of the super slide seating. And you can see how it's very easy to get to even the storage under the sofa. Not only does the top flip up like almost all storage sofas do, but you see that you've also got the flip down facing on that with some purpose-built storage totes on the front. And I've got some awesome dust particulate on my lens that is just annoying the life out of me right now, but that's just how I am. And in addition to all of the sleeping space you get from the bunks, you see that we also have these big fold-down sleeper seating areas right here. 
And this U-Dinette could probably sleep an adult pretty easily. Now, what's also nice is you might have noticed we had slide side breeze windows, but over here in the super slide of these Wildwoods, you also get roll down blackout shades. And if you recall how bright it was outside just a few seconds ago, you can see that those things do an amazing job. What's also cool is the white LED lighting above that slide. If you want to turn off all the main lighting and just leave that on and pull those shades down at night for privacy, you have a really effective like night light for uh, people to be able to see to navigate the RV in the evenings. Now we looked at the entertainment earlier, but notice its location and the angle upon which it's mounted. It's right next to the sofa. People can also come and go in and out of the RV without really walking directly in front of that, as opposed like if you're sitting at the sofa itself, or if you're sitting at the dinette. And that's one of the things is that this is a, a very easy floor plan to add, upgrade, and expand your entertainment options onto if you're even interested. There's a lot of people that go, you know, camping in something like this and go, I didn't go camping to put a TV up here. But I'd be surprised if you, you know, couldn't put like a big 40 inch or something up here if you were so inclined. Now we saw that door open earlier, but all closed up again. It does just have a, a good, effective, sort of clean appearance to it. Now there is a sliding privacy door to get us into the master bedroom up here. We've got dual full length hanging wardrobe closets. We have large stands on both sides. Both sides of the bed have household and USB plugs. Uh, we've got a full overhead cabinet as opposed to just a shelf. You know, they do a good job of really utilizing every ounce of space in this thing. And this right here, so Big Wild Woods, they do have a Camp Queen. But notice, ladies and gentlemen, they give you a ton of room here. If you do want to upgrade to a traditional 60 by 80 residential queen, you do have the room to do so without losing your ability to walk around the bed. And say it with me, stow and go, baby. These guys are very good at just finding inexpensive, lightweight ways to really improve your daily camping use. So we've got that plywood bed base with those easy lift struts. It gets right up out of the way whenever you need it. That's absolutely no problem. But these little uh, organizer cubes, they could easily be like, function like drawers effectively, like your own personal dresser drawers with yet another shoe garage below. But the back side of that entertainment center, what they did over here is I think one of the biggest strokes of genius on this floor plan. Remember how I said it was what they did with this wall that defined this floor plan for me? They came up with a six foot nine bedroom bonus closet that gives you all sorts of extra space like it, it's basically like a uh, you see like fifth wheels or some travel trailers they have a bedroom closet slide out it gives you all that same storage without the extra weight and cost of an additional slide it's genius and if you haven't noticed really one of the the trends here is that if it's an object you're going to use see feel touch every single day they jazz it up a little, they church it up a bit. Like those baggage doors, they have magnet holdbacks to make getting in and out of there easier. That uh, behind the power tongue jack in your uh, uh, propane bottles, you've got a battery disconnect so that when you're not using the RV, it doesn't go into phantom load situation and eat your battery alive. We've got an extra thick aluminum nose sweep on the front here so that the whole nose looks good, it repels stones and, and brutal headwinds. And also guys, basically, uh, like any of the metal that you're looking at, it's painted. And you might notice there's almost no decals used on this RV. There's just a couple that say Wildwood, but other than that, what you're getting is a painted skin package. Now, people pay tons of money in like big fifth wheels and motorhomes for paint packages. And I'm, I'm not saying this is the same full body paint as something like a diesel pusher, but the fact is you have uh, a far more weather resistant skin system here than what you otherwise could have on a lot of other RVs. Um, so back up here, something just popped into my view I want to make sure I, I uh, take some time to talk about, and that is the JT Strongarm Jack Leg Stabilizers that we have here. That's these yellow bars. What's cool about this, guys, if you're looking for extra campsite stability, these things do an amazing job. You got this little T-handle right here. You can just, you can tighten them by hand, and they will make an amazing immediate difference as to the stability of your RV. So uh, if, if you wanna you know, have a lot of kids coming and going, people running around, but maybe you don't have your sea legs and you get motion sick easy, this is an awesome brand for you. Uh, now you could add those strong arm le jack leg stabilizers to almost any uh, RV out there. 
But isn't it nice that they did it from the factory level and now their factory guarantee is backing that work? It's just one of those extra little Wildwood advantages. Now you got the Darth Vader black helmet job up here. That's our Furion backup camera prep sitting here below that fully walkable roofing. We've got 3 8 roof decking, 16 inch on center studs basically all the way around the shell of the RV, 5 8 tongue and groove plywood flooring. It's not so much the differences in construction, it's the differences in features and amenities that kind of help define the Wildwood series. And over here on the campsite, naturally, we've got our power awning. It is uh, tilt adjustable. It has also an auto rain dump feature, full length white LED lighting below, and that is mounted below a white skirted, I guess you could say, uh, power awning so that it really does kind of brighten up out here. Now the awning clears both entry doors, both of which are anti-slam doors, and you see that this does give us direct bathroom access right here, which is pretty darn nice, so that if the kid's been out running amok or frankly just running in and out. The number one and number two reasons kids are in and out of campers all day, well people, anybody, not just kids, is to use the toilet or to grab a drink. And you can do both of those things out here without having to uh, track a bunch of dirt through the RV, which is a very, very handy feature. Now, if you're new to RVing, you're a little spooked by the fact that there's a door that goes straight to the bathroom outside. You're afraid that somebody could open the door and you're going to feel like you're in a public restroom stall, except it's going to be a very public restroom stall. Well, don't forget over here in this anti-slam door, we do have a deadbolt lock. So this door... To that bathroom is just as secure as that door to your main entry over there. Now our speakers are low mounted over here which is pretty darn nice so that it uh, you can keep your volume lower but actually hear it easier and you know not cheese off the neighbors. Um, they've also got a, a pretty neat little mini outside kitchenette here and that's kind of the trick of a floor plan like this. When you have a bathroom entry door and a super slide you used to really have to choose do I get well, uh, with a super slide in a bunkhouse, you have to choose, do I get a bathroom entry door or do I get an outside kitchenette? And they kind of cracked the code here a little bit and figured out a way to do that. So this is space that's under the uh, kitchen countertop in an area that is a little harder to access from the inside. So they made it easier to access outside. We've got our extra little refrigerator here. So between inside and outside, you have somewhere between 12 to 13 cubic foot of cold storage total in this RV. That's pretty fantastic. We've got our little uh, extra large flip out, you know, sort of dog dish sink basin thing here. Although I like how this is really doubling as a second outside utility shower. Awesome for campsite cleanup stuff here, especially when you can see uh, the uh, little blue hose also includes a residential sized brass fitting on the end that can just use various sort of garden hose sprayer attachments. And over here we've got a very low profile uh, electric induction cooktop. What's kind of cool about these, this is lower so it's easier to get to, it's easier to actually cook on, and if you turn this thing off very quickly it becomes cool to the touch. Well, it's down here low enough that the kiddos might be able to reach it. And the last thing you want is your little babies with their precious little fingers touching this thing and burning themselves. So very quickly after you turn that power off, it is safe to the touch, which is pretty darn cool. Wildwoods all give us these nice LCI stable steps. The full blood Wildwood here gives us a triple step versus a double. What I like about this one is that it does have a larger top plank. It makes it kind of like a, a seat for your campsite, but also... Uh, if you drop stuff, like your keys, if you're trying to get in that anti-slam door with that extra large handle right there, it, uh, you know, it's it's easier just to reach down and pick them up. You don't, they don't tend to fall down under the camper. Now, we've got a simple side mount solar prep plug right here, and that is the perfect place to be able to put, you know, a uh, solar panel is this monstrous front cavity up here. Now, remember that you can lift the bed with those easy lift struts right there to get in and out. But the fact is, I mean, they, they actually mount their beds a little higher on these to give you a larger pass-through compartment. But it's this little area over here that I love. So for things like your manual or power tongue jack, uh, your manual, on or God bless America, your power awning or power tongue jack manual override crank, there we go. They actually give them a place to get up out of the way so that they're not interfering with the rest of your cargo. And then you got this little guy right here, that little drill bit. Well, I've said for years how instead of power jacks, you could spend $5.99 in my parts store, pretend you're a NASCAR pit crew driver, hook your uh, power drill that you probably already own up 
to this little thing right here and whoop, whoop, put your jacks up and down in record speed. And manual jacks actually tend to be rated to hold more weight than power jacks. So this thing's going to be incredibly sturdy and stable, especially when you uh, utilize those strong arm stabilizers that we already talked about. It's not how much this thing costs, ladies and gentlemen. It's what it does for you. And it's just the fact that obviously the people behind Wildwood RV understand how RVs are used and who their target audience is. They get it, they get it inside and out. They do everything that matters and nothing that doesn't. They're all feature, no nonsense. All thriller, no filler, whatever you want to say, I think you get the point. So, give us a call here at Halid RV because kind of like a Wildwood RV, we're a no-nonsense kind of place. So whether you need hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package, deals, RV delivery, and everything in between, we do it all. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.